What's up everybody? How's it going? Good to see you again. So for the last month and a half or so, I've been flying all over the nation, taking a look at the very best TVs of 2024. And you've probably seen some of the videos for those come out. But while I was out flying around, had a little surprise drop on my doorstep. And since it was a surprise for me, I thought, why not make it a surprise for you too? So for the very first time, I'm not going to reveal the TV I'm unboxing and setting up for you until the very end. My question for you is, do you think you can guess what it is? Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and a couple of things before we get started. One, I apologize for the sound of my voice. I lost it last week and it is slow to come back. So you get raspy Caleb today. Uh, number two, there is some crazy construction going on right outside the studio. Uh, so if you hear some weird noises, my apologies. Uh, nothing we can do about that. I'd ask him to stop, but they've got a job to do. Speaking of jobs, Zeke's got a tough one ahead of him today because I don't know how he's gonna shoot this so that we don't accidentally reveal the make and model of this television. But I do want you to play along. I want you to try and guess what this is. See if you can figure it out before we make the big reveal. And please, no cheating, no scrubbing to the end of the video and finding out what it is and then coming back and leaving a comment. Let me know if you figure it out. I'm gonna try to drop some clues, some subtle, some maybe not so subtle. I promise you, it's an exciting TV. So thanks in advance for coming along on the ride. Now, let's start cutting into this thing. down and then we need to get the uh, the stand set up on this thing so I was talking to some other reviewers uh, a week or so ago on a trip and they commented on how much they hate putting the TV face down oh that might give something away right there uh, they hate putting the TV face down to uh, install the legs or the pedestal. Like, I've got no problem with it at all. In fact, I prefer it. That whole thing where you like have to do some puzzle with the base of the box to install the legs or the stand, do it from, I, no, no thank you. So I'm all about reinforcing the box with the foam that came with it and um, carefully laying it down flat on something soft. You protect the screen, you're gonna have no problems at all. I know a lot of folks worry about that. I get the concern, but the fact of the matter is, if you do everything very carefully, this is a very safe way uh, to get your TV up and running. All right, now we gotta get the pedestal on this. Actually, is pedestal a clue? Or is it maybe a little bit of a misdirection? No logo. What does this say? Subwoofer. <laughs> so if you really know your TV designs, then you might already have a feeling you know what this TV is by now just from this. But we gotta get the pedestal on this. And for that, I'm gonna need my tool because there's a bit of screwing to do. So the stand for our mystery TV is actually quite robust. This is a very heavy metal plate with plenty of uh, anti-skid pads on the bottom. Um, and I think the way I'm gonna go about this is we'll attach the collar to the television first. And then once this is on, we'll attach the base plate uh, to the, the collar or whatever we wanna call this thing. All right, so it looks like a little bit of cable management is available here. Oh, good, two mystery screws. Yeah, okay, so this is multi-positional. So if you wanted a little more clearance, uh, so you have uh, space for a sound bar, you'd wanna mount this lower. Um, or if you want a stealthier, low slung look, you mount this higher. Two different position options marked one and two. We're only two screws into this and it already feels really well locked in. I am pleased with the build quality so far. Now we gotta get this heavy thing mounted onto here. There's a couple of little tabs here. We just line those up. Yeah, that'll hold while I get the four screws into this thing. Yeah. What, what's going wrong here? 
You would think that the screws would go in from the bottom of the plate and screw into this. Uh, they do not. They actually screw down into the plate from the top. Um, so, thank you, Zeke, for saving my butt because I was about to freak out there for a little. Turns out the design's not dumb. I am. The stand is in. Time to put this up on the, uh, the BDI. All right, blanket's coming off. Not sure if this is gonna actually reveal much. Um, hmm, what do you think? Got this figured out yet? Um, I will say this. The picture on the box, which we'll show you in a little bit here, once we've revealed the TV, makes this look like it's gonna be much thinner than it actually is. Now, I'm not upset at its thickness. With a mini LED TV such as this, um, you need to have a little bit of room for the backlight system. Also, we've kind of gotten away from ultra thin TVs in favor of performance, which I'm also good with. Still, seems a little bit, uh, you know, thicker than what I expected. Thankfully though, the bezels are nearly non-existent. There is basically a frame here to hold in the screen and that is it. So it's still a pretty slick looking TV. Um, but yeah, let's get some of this protective film off and uh, plug it in and then at that point, there's no hiding what TV this is. All right, so fairly stout three-pronged power cable here, which is a good sign uh, if you like your TVs nice and bright, not so great if you're into conserving uh, energy. Um, but yeah, I actually think that's a, a pretty good sign. Now let's see how this cable management works. So I'm gonna do a couple of these just to illustrate because I have given this company a little bit of guff for not providing adequate cable management. And I am glad to see that uh, there's at least some here. The only problem uh, with, you know, having cable management on a central pedestal style stand like this is that, uh, go on in there, um, you have to have longer cables now to go from where they plug in to where they're gonna get managed, which is right here in the center. So we just basically take our HDMI cables or optical cable, whatever you're plugging in, slide them in uh, and move them over. So they reside behind this clip and we're getting three fairly stout HDMI cables in there. Um, although not a whole lot of uh, room on one of these because it's not quite long enough. But at this point, we should be able to clip on uh, that little cover plate. Yeah, get it just right. Why does the back of this TV remind me of Darth Vader? Now that's not quite enough space for three stout cables, but it's functional. So let me get the film off this guy. Either it's got film on the screen or we got some bubble issues. All right, now for my favorite part. just crackle in the background. It's like a roaring fire. From the, from the front anyway, it's a pretty sleek looking TV. Uh, if this little metal sort of bezel strip down at the bottom isn't a dead giveaway, I don't know what is. But if there's any suspense left at this point, uh, it's gonna end as soon as I plug this TV in. Uh, at least that has uh, historically been the case. So let's see what happens, shall we? All right, we're plugged in. Any moment now we shall see a logo. Ha ha, there it is. How many of you had the Hisense U8N down in the comments before whatever the timestamp is uh, at this point in the video? That's right, Hisense U8N, I suppose I can remove this little piece of gaffer tape. Not that you can really see the logo on this anyway. It's not illuminated. It's tucked away in the lower left corner, which I appreciate. And there's our Google TV start screen. So yeah, 
Let me go ahead and get through a couple of steps here so we're not just looking at this. So since we're doing stuff different today, I'm gonna set this up as a basic TV. We'll set up Google TV later, but a lot of folks have expressed interest in getting a dumb TV. And while that doesn't really exist, save a few very inexpensive small TV models, this kind of gets you close. Uh, you, with a Google TV, you can choose set up basic TV. And what you'll notice is that it basically um, obscures movie and TV shows from favorite streaming apps, meaning you're not gonna get at your streaming apps. Uh, personalized recommendations, not gonna show you anything like that. No Google Assistant. It will allow live TV and access to the HDMI devices. So antenna and HDMI inputs. I've never really shown anybody what this looks like though. So let's go ahead and get into it and see what it does look like if you set it up as a basic TV. So right off the bat, one indication that it's not really a dumb TV, even in basic TV mode, is that it asks to be connected to the internet. Presumably, this is going to be so that it can check for updates. The thing is, that's kind of important. A lot of new TVs ship uh, with the intention of updating the firmware to their final version once the TV has gotten out of its box and into a home, it needs to be connected to the internet so it can process that update. That right there is going to cause folks some concern. Why can't TVs just be fully prepared out of the box? I don't know. Why can't video games not need updates as soon as you download them? Here's another thing that doesn't give you dumb TV vibes. You're having to accept terms and conditions from Google, right? So this is another reason why I don't recommend Google TVs as a dumb TV option. Um, it's gonna drag you through this stuff in the initial setup, and as you notice, there's no skip option here. Boy, it really makes you jump through some uh, hoops. Help improve Google TV, no, we won't do that. Turn that off. Uh, services in your privacy. Uh, sure, we'll go ahead and uh, pair the remote, having gone through all of that not really dumb TV stuff. So yeah, um, different remote for this TV. It's not actually metal though. It looks like metal, feels like plastic. It's a uh, pretty lightweight too, but it's an attractive remote. We don't currently have a soundbar hooked up, so we're just going to skip that. This is what I'm talking about. Like even when you say set it up as a basic TV, it's still connecting to the internet. It's still asking for a lot of uh, approvals of terms and conditions most of which is much longer than you want to read. Uh, yeah, you know, there is no such thing as a dumb TV anymore. Now, having gone through that rant, I should point out that there's nothing about this experience that's unique to Hisense. This is gonna be true for any brand that uses Google TV as its base operating system, which includes how you interact with like the picture setting menu and everything. And even though I set it up as a basic TV and I said no to just about everything that I could, Look, it still looks like Google TV. And while there's stuff missing from the top here, um, we still have apps. What happens if I click one of them? It still loads up Netflix. Like, it's not a dumb TV. I feel like it's just smoke and mirrors. Okay, side quest over. Let's bring it back to the Hisense U8N itself now. The reason that I think this is such an important TV, the reason, as I said at the beginning of this video, I think it should be on the short list for anybody looking for a TV in 2024, is that this series of Hisense TV, the U8 series, has historically provided the very best picture quality for the dollar on the market. This and one other TV from another competitor. If you're looking for a super specced out TV, with excellent performance without spending a super premium price, this TV is it. You could call it the budget video files dream. And I have, that has applied to prior U8 series TVs in the past. At this point, it is my responsibility to sit down and just watch this TV a lot, which I assure you is not gonna be a problem uh, because I'm recovering from pneumonia and honestly, I shouldn't even be shooting this video right now. But. Uh, I have lots of downtime on the couch planned. We're gonna dig into this TV. Things that I'm gonna be paying particularly close attention to are, well, of course, the backlight performance. It's a mini LED TV. I have a lot to pay attention to with this particular TV. Of course, we wanna look at the peak brightness. Everybody gets excited about that. This thing promises over 3,000 nits, and Hisense is usually very conservative about their ratings, so we're gonna see how 
much over that line it actually punches. We're gonna wanna look at the backlight performance itself. We're gonna wanna know how many zones this is broken down into, how fast the backlight adapts, whether or not it manages uh, blooming well without sacrificing peak brightness in HDR highlights. More importantly though, I really wanna take a look at the processing, right? I feel like that is the one area in which Hisense needed to improve a little bit to punch up a little bit closer to some of the more expensive brands on the market. If Hisense can provide really great picture uh, performance through excellent motion handling, really good upscaling, as well as uh, the cleanup of low bitrate content, so streaming stuff, does it clean that up and make it look really good? Can we ditch the macro blocking? Can we make sure that we don't have a lot of banding in uh, large color areas? That's the kind of stuff I'm gonna look at. And of course, it's gonna be interesting to check out how the audio performance is on this TV as well. Anyway, there's lots of work to do, but I was really excited to share with you that we got a U8N in so early. Normally, I go to these events for these first look things and then we get the TVs. This is the first time in a long time that I've gotten a TV before I went to the launch event. I'm headed to a Hisense launch event later this month, as a matter of fact. But we've got one of their most interesting TVs of 2024 right here, and the review is gonna come out before I even fly out to New York to check out what Hisense says will be some certain surprises, stuff that was not announced or shown at CES. So there's still plenty of reason to go out there. The Hisense U8N, the first TV reviewed for me, at least, in 2024. I'm very excited to show it to you. And hey, if you appreciated our little mystery reveal today, would you do me a favor, smash that like button? We would appreciate it so much, as would, I'm sure, the YouTube algorithm. Also, subscribe, because you're not gonna wanna miss any of the content that we have coming out over the next several weeks and months. All the best stuff is about to come at you, and I don't want you to miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.